Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about a keyword known as auto. Now, the auto keyword has gone through a little bit of a transformation if you know some of the C++ history. It used to just mean automatic storage, which is sort of the default when we create a variable and place it on the stack. So it wasn't really used or that very useful for us because it was redundant in how we would use it. Now, that said, the auto keyword got repurposed in modern C++. So this means a way to automatically deduce or infer a type. So let's go ahead and look at it in CPP reference and then look at a few examples of how we might actually use auto and discuss whether we even should. So with that said, let's go ahead and do a search here for auto here. You'll get some nice uh, auto insurance uh, search results here. But what we're really looking for is in our keywords here. And again, this is the deprecated thing that was before C++11 talking about the storage of a variable. What we're really interested in is the placeholder for a type specifier. And basically, again, C++ compilers are smart enough to try to deduce a reasonable type for you. And most of the time, it should be correct. Now, what I want to go ahead and do is just show you an example here so we can see how auto is used. So I'm going to go ahead and just write sort of the simplest program that I can. Let's just go ahead and write a little uh, hello world program. And let's just go ahead and give ourselves some output here. And let's just go ahead and print out some value here and what i'll go ahead and do is just create our variable value 72 something of this manner we'll compile it and again this is a c plus plus 11 or beyond feature so i'll use c plus plus 20 here and again if we compile this it seems to work here now the advantage or where we use auto is that we don't have to specify this type because usually we can figure out based on how this type is constructed whether it is using a constructor or if it's a primitive type that this really should just be an integer here so let's go ahead and just change this to uh, auto to show you an example here and if I go ahead and recompile this program and rerun it, then we'll again see that we get the same output. So the C++ compiler is smart enough to figure out that this type is an integer or maybe a long or maybe a short or some other type that can hold 72. Now, that bears a little bit of a discussion here because maybe this was really meant to just be a char, for instance, for which 72 would fit within uh, eight bits of information because we could store a range of either 0 to 255 or negative, you know, 127 to 128 or whatever. Um, so that is something we do have to be careful of when using auto. So I want to open that up to a little bit of a larger discussion here in a moment. But before I do that, let me go ahead and just output this program here. And I want to bring this into a tool that we often like uh, using in this series, and that's the CPP Insights tool. Uh, so we can go ahead and just see that when I run this through CPP Insights, you'll see that, in fact, the compiler is picking an integer here. So that's a relatively smart choice here. Now, if I go ahead and change this to, say, uh, 72.02, let's go ahead and run this again. And let's see what value it picks here. Now, this time we can go ahead and see that it picks a double here because, well, that's the default type here. If we explicitly set this to a float, then it should also initialize it as a float here. And again, we can see uh, how this is done with the keyboard of auto. So again, the compiler is trying to figure out the actual type based on what is the right hand side here. So that's where things are sort of interesting here. Now, if our code goes through some sort of evolution, this is kind of nice because, for example, maybe I decide that, hey, this value thing here is, well, let's go ahead and put some string here, uh, like Mike here. And again, we could go ahead and see that it just sort of picks out what the right thing is to do here. Now, what if I had indeed meant uh, to include the string library, though? Will this be smart enough to figure out, well, value was meant to be a string? And in this case, it's a little bit ambiguous. Now, what we really do want here, though, or what I should say is it's not really ambiguous because this is a uh, string literal and that is how we would sort of instantiate this. But again, maybe we were including string and we intended this to be a string. And for example, what if we were trying to do different operations like uh, value dot size, for instance, uh, to see the size of this string, would it be able to figure this out? And the answer is, well, it looks like not so much. So I would actually have to change this to a string run this through here. 
and eventually we can see that this code works. So auto is not necessarily smart enough to guess what our intent is. So we do have to be a little bit careful or just sort of assume or um, maybe use auto in cases where it is very obvious what it's going to be. So let me go ahead and show you one of those cases where we often use auto and where I also think it's acceptable. So I'm going to go ahead back to our code sample here, our main here, and let's just include another data type here. And I'm going to include the vector data type, which we've talked about a little bit in this series, but we'll eventually talk more about the standard template library here. And let's just go ahead and create some uh, vector here. Now, again, I'm going to be relatively explicit about what that type is here. Uh, let's just call this ints, for example, and we'll push back some ints, push back maybe one. And let's go ahead and push back uh, a few more values here. And what if we want to sort of iterate through all these values? Well, again, this is something that we have to talk about a little bit more in the series here, but we could use something called an iterator. So I would write the iterator here, and usually I don't remember the syntax, but we would have std vector, it's of int, iterator, let's see, iterator, uh, it, something like that, equals ints.begin, while it is not equal to it end, then we would do i++, and we could go ahead and print out uh, each of the values here from our iterator here. So let's go ahead and see if I did that correctly without making any mistakes at all. And it looks like I made one mistake. With it end, we really want our collection, which is ints. And let's go ahead and try that again and IT, there we are, okay. So as you can see, this is a bit of a mouthful here. And this particular line here where I have an iterator that I'm creating here, well, this is sort of what is implied here. This is usually pretty clear here. So this is one example where I will sometimes use auto. Uh, so that might be a matter of style, I would say, that it still works and is still able to deduce this type here. So let's go ahead and just run this through, again, the CPP Insights tool just so that you can see what auto uh, picks out for us here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this here, paste this in, make this just a little bit smaller. And you can see, well, there's a little bit of machinery behind this, but it is essentially generating the right iterator for us, whatever this huge uh, type is here. So that's usually a good use case of auto or something that's clear enough, for example. Now, again, I tend to, as a programmer, though, like to explicitly write out all the types. You can use auto, and in a way, it sort of makes C++ feel like a more uh, dynamically typed language, like Python, for instance, where you're not typically specifying the types in Python uh, 2 or you know some of the earlier versions in Python 3, for example, uh, where you don't have to do that. So some programmers like that freedom, or maybe it allows you to iterate a little bit more, but I'm a little bit cautious, especially if I know I'll have code that's long lived, and I just want to see the explicit type as I showed it with that little string example. So we've looked at in this series a little bit some code style guides. So I went ahead and went to the Google C++ style guide just to see if they had anything and kind of did a little search for auto and they had some recommendations here. So you might use this as some guiding advice or just to see some other opinions beyond mine about when to use auto or not to use auto. Now, you've also seen though where auto can be useful in templates. So for example, and let me bring up another example which hopefully this example is a little bit familiar if you've been watching these videos in order. Make sure that you like and subscribe so you haven't missed these. And I'm going to overlay myself with myself here uh, just to show this little example here where we can use auto for return type when we are defining functions, for example. And in this particular example, what we were showing with multiply was if I have two different types here, auto can deduce what the result of that type might be. So for example, if we're multiplying a float in an int, we don't have to specify the actual return type as a float. The auto keyword can help us with that actual deduction. So that video was this one right here that I'll highlight, and you can go ahead and see that example if you want uh, to see that build up. So those are just a few use cases of auto, again, where it can be more clear or help you write some better code that 
uh, might be useful. Now, again, depending on what your school of thought or maybe your style guide is, you might have varying opinions on auto. In general, I think it's an okay thing to have in code bases, but just make sure you're using it consistently or in a clear way such that your type can be identified. A lot of IDEs that have good integrations when you hover over things will also be able to tell you what type it thinks it is or how it's going to compile it. So that can also be helpful. So keep that in mind. All right, folks, so this is a long overdue video on auto. I know it's a one of the exciting features that was added way back in modern C++11 that folks are really excited about, uh, but I just thought uh, we had seen it enough and it was time for its own dedicated video, so here you are. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I'll look forward to seeing you folks in the next one.